Well, hey friends, Shanna Kramer here with Creatively Uncorked, and today we are going to paint the Santa Bear. I've got mine all sketched out already on a canvas. If you are a Creatively Uncorked member, you will have your tracing template in your downloads, and you also have your reference photo in your downloads. This reference photo, again, just another AI image, and um, I just thought this guy was adorable. And we're going to pull it off <clears throat> in acrylic paint today. So with acrylic paint, this is what dries very quickly and dries permanently. So we're going to build it up in layers. The colors I'm working with today are black, blue, red, yellow, white, and a little bit of brown. I'm going to start by adding a layer of color over this. And then we'll get into it. I have a few different brushes. I have a couple of bristle brushes. These are the coarse hair that you can make really good uh, fur texture with. I've got a couple of those. I have a synthetic round for some details in a synthetic flat, just for spreading the paint around. So I'm going to start with the background on this guy. And my background has a little bit of a glow to it. So I'll start with a little bit of red, a little bit of yellow, and I am putting a little bit of water in this. Okay, and now some white. All right, and I kind of want to get this nice glowy area. This orange here kind of color is going to represent my glow. And I'm just kind of scribbling over a lot of areas. It's almost like toning the canvas. But this is where I want the glow in the background. So I'm just going to go ahead and keep adding this color wherever I want it. I'm keeping it thin by adding a small amount of water. How's that? Looking good. Okay, I'll let that go. Wiping the paint off of my paintbrush on the paper towel, taking it to the water, and give that brush a good swish in the water just to rinse that paint out. Tap it on the bottom. There we go. Most of the paint is out, not all of it, but close enough. Close enough rock and roll. A little red. A little blue. A little bit of red. A scoop of white. Even a tiny touch of red again. So until when you're happy with the shade of purple that you have here, then go ahead and add that to the background as well. So this purple is meant to be my night sky. And this is very um, abstract and representational. Not representational, abstract. We'll call it abstract background. Okay, so and I'll just blend the two colors gently here. Don't overdo this part because it'll turn to mud. So we're just going to kind of give it a little blend, give it a little tap, 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 kind of a blend where the two colors sort of overlap each other. Okay. Wiping that paint off again, picking up a little bit more of that purple, doing it again in the next corner. Tiny little touch of water. Of course, I think I'll have to mix up a little more paint here. And through it pretty quickly. It's definitely always better to mix more paint than you think you need. So you don't have to try to mix it twice. Not that you can't mix it twice, I'm sure you can. It's just a little more challenging. And this painting is already going to be a challenge. Okay, so blending my oranges, purples just a little bit. Adding some interest to the texture in that background. Lovely. Okay, moving on. One more color I'm going to need down here will be a light blue. I'm just going to keep going with that purple as long as I have it. And if I'm covering some lines, overlapping a little bit, that's fine. I know where that teddy bear's at. I can get it back later. Mm 
Just some nice texture. All right, wiping that paint color off. Give the brush a good swish in the water. Most of the paint is out, not enough, but again, we're just blending colors right now, so I'm not super worried about it. Taking some white, a little bit of blue, a little more white, and a little more blue. Okay, so I have a dark blue here, a light blue here. I'm going to start with my darker blue because that's where the shadows are going to be meeting the bear. Shadows could even be darker than this. Taking that dark blue again, just keep going. Bear shadow coming right over here. And we'll just go ahead and make those corners a little bit darker. Kind of having a darker color at the bottom of your canvas seems to sort of anchor your design, give it some weight. Okay, so I've got my blues now. Back to that light blue. And then I'll come back here and start filling in the lighter areas. More white. So this is the snow around the bear. And I keep stopping and wiping this paint off on the paper towel before going back and picking up more color. want to keep the color from getting too muddy, too messy, too soon anyway. Okay, now a little bit of blue I have there, I'll just sort of blend that up into the background. We've got the blue snow that the teddy bear is sitting on. I'll add more white to this later. Just taking a look at the reference photo for a second. So the reference photo, you can see we've got a lot of white right in here and up in here, and we can add that, but we are starting by just getting a layer of paint on the canvas. We're building this one up in layers. Okay. Rinsing that out. And I'll want to rinse it out pretty well this time because I'm switching to red. Okay, so now my plan with this, the next color I'll be adding is red. So I'll be filling in all of the red areas with red. Easy peasy, that's it. So just take some red on your brush and fill in those red areas. When we get this red added, there will be no depth to it. Not right away anyway. We'll have to come back later and add some shadows, add some highlights. For now, just red. Okay, and then we have his jacket. I'm just trying to be as careful as I can with this bigger brush. We do have this gift box that the bear is holding and that is also red. I didn't want to paint it at the same time though. It's kind of a mental game you can play with yourself to help separate the shapes. So in this case, I'm painting the jacket separate from the box and then going forward, those two will be separate items in my mind as I finish this painting. Okay. 
And these are going to, this box is going to have a little bit of a yellow ribbon. I'll just paint, paint that over it later. And there is a ribbon up here, so I don't want to go too overboard that it will be glowing. <clears throat> so maybe I'll just, I'll just take the red off my brush now and go back to that glowing color, that whitish orangish. And acrylic does dry pretty quickly, so mine is already dry on my plate. Okay, so then I'm gonna come back in here, a little more yellow, a little more white, and kind of get those colors to blend. This is going to be the light side of my box. It's kind of glowing a little bit. Why does everything glow at Christmas? I don't know, but it sure is fun. Top of the square box, okay. All right, I might not go too much further than that. Maybe this little bottom of the box is a little highlight. Okay, enough. <laughs> That's fine, we can wait. All right, be patient. Okay, with that red at least covered, now we can move on to the next color. Let's move on to brown. And the brown areas are pretty small. So I'll start with, let's see, do I want the bigger small brush? Uh, nope, I'm going to start, yeah, I do. <laughs> Always want to use the biggest brush possible. And I'm about to find out if this brush is too big and I have to change it, but that's all right. So I'm just starting out with this pure brown. This is a burnt umber. And I'll get all the darkest areas. A little bit of a lumpy brown here. See what I can mix with it. Maybe a little yellow. Maybe a little red. Maybe a little blue. Okay, so anybody that tells you that uh, your paint quality doesn't matter, <laughs> they are trying to sell you something. Okay, T paint quality does matter. This is student grade paint that I'm using. Um, actually, it's a artist loft, so this is from, you know, wherever you get artist loft. And uh, you can do pretty nice paintings with it have to put in a little bit more effort than you would with a professional quality paint. Isn't that kind of the way it is with everything though? So I'm just getting all of the shadows here. A little bit of blue. A little bit of water. Blue and brown will make the make a very dark color. So if you don't have black, you don't need it. You just mix blue and brown together. Okay, I just wanna make sure I'm getting all those shadows in. So don't along the face. Okay, now those little feet. A reference photo has toes on it, but they're creepy. So I'm not going to use them. We're just gonna have them have some little round, you know, like a stuffed stuffed bare feet instead of uh, whatever that is. We'll make them cute and stuffed looking. And his little paws, he's got some shadows, he's got some highlights. He does have some little paw fingers, but I may turn those into mittens for the same reason as the toes. Taking a little bit more blue, mixing into that brown, getting a dark color, dark shadow color.
little more shadow around the outside of the feet. All right, this is probably the point where this big bristle brush is getting a little too big for this fine detail. So I'm gonna have to quit and let it go pretty soon. Okay. Yep, I think that's pretty good for the dark brown. I'm rinsing this brush. I'm leaving it in the water for now. Uh, just so the paint doesn't dry on the brushes, I'll come back at the end of the painting and clean these brushes with soap and water just to make sure they last another day. If paint dries on your brushes, you are SOL. You're buying new brushes. It's really, really hard to try to recover a brush from, uh, from getting dried out, from uh, acrylic paint especially drying on it. Let's see, I'm trying to get that light brown. But I'm not very happy with that color, so let's go back to the orange. Brown is basically dark orange. Okay, it's mixing in a little white, and brightening up that orange a little. And we'll compare. How close are we? A little redder. Pretty close. Okay. All right, now I've got some fuzzy bear highlights here. I think maybe this is sort of the mid-tones. That's okay. We'll come back over this with the lightest color and add our lightest highlights. So we can get that nice fur texture. This medium orange, kind of a dirty looking orange here. This is the light brown. And we'll come back with an even lighter color here pretty soon. Add in those bright, bright, bright highlights. In the meantime, we'll just make this, ba this bear's face look a little fuzzy. Come back up to here to the ear, make sure we get that fuzzy ear. I'll just keep going with this color until I get everything filled in that needs to be. A little more white in that one, I think. Okay, and then I'll think about if we want any more detail on that uh, mitten. We can call it a mitten or a paw or whatever part of the bear that's, this is going to be. And this is kind of, uh, so the paint underneath here is a little bit barely wet, mostly dry, I'd say. So instead of getting a true blend, it's more of a dry brushing blend. So you're just adding paint over the top of the other paint and it'll show through a little bit. So you're seeing the brown and this medium color I'm putting over the top. the other foot over here. OK, 
Okay, I'm picking up a little bit of that brown. I'm kind of going into the darker color again. I don't want to add a little bit of a fur texture here without drawing too much attention to it. Okay, I think that's going to be it. All right. So then I have the pads of those feet, which I think can look like this, but slightly more pink. So I'm kind of working with that orange color. That's what I have in my brush and I'm picking up some clean white, which is immediately going to get this paint dirty because I'm using a not clean brush. All right, slight amount of red in there. We'll pinken it up. Get those bare feet, bare, bare feet. <laughs> Okay, and then I'll add a little tiny touch of brown to that color for my shadow. There, and I'm just blending that along the bottom edge of that little bear's foot. A little darker, a little more brown. Well, I think that's not looking too bad. Let's keep going. All right, so before I, I mean, I know this brush works really well for hair, for fur, but before we get to that, actually, you know what? We should make all the bare skin the same color. So if this is the skin on his foot, then shouldn't the skin on the nose be the same? So I'm going to go back and pick up a little more of that pink again. A little bit more. Oop. And that looks okay. If you drop your brush, just make sure you clean it off. If you drop it on your canvas, well, you're gonna have some little cleanup to do there too. All right, so here's my bare face. bright chin down here. Okay, now we can go after that darker color again. So I'll add a little bit more brown to our face color. Then we can get the shadows like near the mouth. We're going to have a big darker shadow here on the left side of the nose. This will be the shadow side. And we'll get that nose all at once in just a little while. Okay, bare skin color, all right. Okay, so let's finish that bright fur color. This bright fur color, I'm just rinsing out my small bristle brush again. I'll start with some white. Here's the orange I was using for my middle mid-tone color for the fur. So I'm just mixing a little bit of that in, a little bit of white, and even a tiny little small amount of yellow. And then I'll get this little fur just doing a little tap, tap, tap. Just getting some of the fur there on the edge of the ear. And little short brush strokes are going to help this to look more fur-like. And this is a furry Santa bear, so <laughs> fur away. Okay, we'll keep going with that highlight color. Maybe even brighten it up a little with some white. some furry highlights on the bare face. And the other cheek. He's 
It's kind of looking a little furry. Little furry highlights in his little hands. And maybe even some couple of little furry highlights here on the feet, just a touch. All right, I'll come back with a, another brush a little bit later and maybe I can, uh, actually, let's do it now. Okay, so I'm switching now to my small round, briefly, <laughs> because I don't like that face. So I'm just going to pick up some of that medium bear color and blend it together. To get the highlight to blend into the, to the shadow color, that should be just fine. Okay. All right, I'm going to move on to the last color and then we can start working with the details. Uh, the last color is going to be white. So any of the white areas are going to get filled in next. Rinsing that brush really well. And we'll take a look at our original here for just a moment. So these white areas, you can tell, are really not very white. So this is a pretty dark blue in here, and it lightens up to a gray. Down here again, we have a, a dark blue-gray that lightens up at the top. More blue, more blue. This white down here doesn't even look white at all. So we have some blue shadows that we'll want to keep in mind, and we'll want to add those first. And we can blend it out with white. Okay, I'll take a little white, little blue. We're running out of white here. A little white, a little blue. Now this blue I'm using, this is Thalo blue. It's pretty darn powerful, so try not to go overboard. Although it's easy to do. See, a little darker. Not quite that dark. It's getting closer, slightly darker. Do we have to make it this exact color? No, of course we don't. It's our bear, we make it whatever color we want. But it is often simple to just follow the colors that you actually see. Adding in the shadow areas of the hat first. And this brush might be a little fluffy for what I'm trying to do here. But we'll fix it later. <laughs> Story of my life, we'll fix it later. Okay, let's get that nice dark blue shadow. A little more blue shadow over here. bit of blue down here and the most blue is going to be down here all of this white fur at the bottom is pretty much blue so we do have a little bit of a transition color in here where it goes from blue to gray and the easiest way well <laughs> not the easiest way one easy way to get gray is to mix blue and brown together if you mix just blue and brown they're going to be a very dark color if you mix blue and brown and white then you get more of a gray see maybe you want a little more white
just looking around for any place else I might see this color. So I'm looking for this, there, this kind of a blueberry color. And I see it down in here more than anywhere else. Okay, so this fluffy brush, I'm dropping it in the water for now, switching again to my detail brush, the small round synthetic brush. And let's see. Just taking a look here. You know, I kind of want to get to those eyes and that nose before I go too far into this, just because that's going to help it seem a lot more complete. So I'm going to take a little bit of blue, a little bit of white. And this will be in the eyes. So I'm just going to do a little, little bit of color. Kind of like the bear has blue eyes, but you can only see them when there's enough light on it. Okay, so there's the bear eye color. The bear nose color. He's going to have a little bit of blue on the side of his nose. And in that one nostril. And I am seeing one thing that I just forgot about. That blue, when we were doing the blue shadows. There's blue shadow on the side of that nose. Quite a bit of it. So make sure I'm getting that added. That, so I'm picking up that bristle brush again with the blue. That blue shadow color, so a little blue, a little white. Okay, and then we've got a little blue over here. And we'll go back to this blue gray a little bit. That's the shadow color on the furry edge. The furry edge of the furry face. Okay, I know it doesn't look very blended and very smooth right now. <laughs> I think you know what I'm gonna say at this point. We'll fix it later. Okay, so I want to kind of come back in and take a look at that nose. So the top of the nose is a little bit of a reddish, kind of a pinkish color. And then this is a really rich brown down here in the nose. Um, yeah, and then we just have the dark smile. And let's go with that. So that dark reddish color, let's start with that. So we'll take a little bit of uh, red, a little bit of brown. Yeah, and that's not quite right, so we'll also add a little blue. So basically this is going to be a brownish purple. Okay. So we've got the darker nostrils. The dark shadow on the bottom. Okay, this brush is a little fluffy, but that's okay. I'm just going to get what details I can. Give that little bear a little smile. You, not a good color. Try a little bit more of that brown. Maybe we'll make them the nose maybe just brown. How about that? And there's that highlight on the top of the nose. So let's get that. That's going to be kind of a orangey light color. I guess it's going to be white and brown. <laughs> Because that's what I have on my brush. Okay, here we go. Nope, not light enough. So then I'll go back and pick up some white. And highlight. How's that? Oh, much better. Much, much better. Okay, 
yeah, we can do other details later. Let's see. I do want that the nostrils to be a little bit darker. That way I just won't have to come back and do them again. We've got enough parts that we're going to fix later, right? We might as well finish this. So dark and dark. All right, so while well, we have this dark color, and I'm using a little bit of black this time. Not super crazy about that brown. It's a bit of a mm, oddly textured paint. So I'm going to black here, mixing that. Maybe I'll mix that with a little red. Like I was saying before, brown is basically a dark orange. So if you mix orange, add a little bit of blue to it, that should be a pretty good brown. How does that look like a bear eye? Oh, a little more black. Well, it's getting there. Yep, yeah, it's getting there. It's starting to look like a bear. Now it's got a face, it's got eyes. Perfect. Now, let's go back and finish that white. Taking my big brush. Now, let's see, what is going to be the closest to pure white here? Probably this. Uh, so down here we've got a little bit of a glow right underneath the edge of the hat. You can see that's a little redder, probably reflecting off of that gift. So we'll go with some red. And some orange, because if we uh, go straight to red, that's going to turn pink. So we want to make sure to add a little bit of yellow into there. And a little more red. Starting to turn pink, okay. Just getting the bottom edge of that hat. It's also going to be the same color down here on the collar. This is kind of a glow color, so we'll go anywhere that there that the that there might need a glow. So a little bit on the ear. Okay, now let's go into the white. And tap tap tap. And now this just this tapping motion is going to get some really, really furry looking texture on that hat. If you have any paint in your brush, it's going to blend the colors together. That's okay. That's how you get interesting variations in color. And I'm going to switch to the small brush. That one is pretty fluffy. So to the small bristle brush, picking up more white. gentle taps until you get enough white fluff in there and then you're happy with it. Some little white fluff on that fuzzball in the hat. There 
don't know, you think. Is it fuzzy looking? Yeah, a little bit. Also kind of covering this little bit of uh, that reflection edge that we did a little bit ago with that bright orangey reddish stuff. So I'm not covering it completely. I am leaving a hint of that color. We put it there because we wanted it there. So now I have it looking like there's that reflection coming up from the gift. All right, a little more white. Coming down to the collar. Now, this is where the glow gets interesting. So the glow is still coming up from this gift, right about there. So I'll just take a light yellow white. Highlights are going to be the brightest, brightest, brightest yellow we can get. A little on the chin, because it would be reflecting up there too. Maybe a little on the cheek. All right, now we can get back to a little bit of orange. That was the brightest spot, it was the yellow. And now the orange would be where it starts to fade a little bit. Okay. All right, so a lot of this I'm okay with, but one thing I'm not okay with right now is that. And that highlight, or the shadow there on the face, just got a bit too intense. So I want to take it down a notch. A little more pink in that, a little more white in that. Let's see, not quite yet. It's gonna be a little more pink. How about that? Well, let's take a look. I do want some of the blue to be there because that shadow color is blue. Oh, hi, DJ. Good afternoon. I'm hoping it turns out cute. Cute is the goal. Okay, cleaning that brush again. I'm going to wear this brush out today. A little bit of darker blue, just going to add some little bit of depth, a little bit of shadow. This blue this time is a little bit watered down because I don't want it too powerful, but I do want it dark. This technique is called glazing. So when you go over a dry color with a really thinned out wet color, that is glazing. It's more often used with oil painting um, and it's a way to get a lot of depth and really bright colors at the same time. The downside of glazing is it takes so long to do. So long. Okay. Back to the white. The little white fuzz around his, let's see, his collar, his, what would you call this, bottom of his jacket? I'm sure it has a better name than that in real life. A little bit more on his other cuff. Maybe it's a cuff. Separate the cuff there from the bottom of his jacket. Okay, what do you think? 
maybe a little darker right in here. Maybe a little, maybe not so much. Just a little, okay. Okay, are you wondering about the reference photo again? Let's take a look. So in this area, this is really, really dark down in here. So maybe I, I could go a lot darker with that. Better. That cuff needs a little more depth. Maybe that depth doesn't need to be blue though. Maybe it can be another color. Maybe we can do some purples or some oranges. What the heck? This is our painting. We can do whatever we want with it. Kind of like that purple the way it looks in the background. So maybe I'll add some more of that in. Yeah, good plan. Yes, DJ, this is acrylic paint. Yep. It's drying very quickly, so I'm having to go back over areas <laughs> multiple times um, to adjust the colors. And if this was oil, oh boy, what an easy painting it would be. But yes, this is acrylic. And I'm using just the basic colors and mixing everything myself, you know, for an additional challenge. Um, just have red, yellow, blue, black, and white. Oh, and I have brown, but I've kind of given up on the brown because it was a not a very good quality paint and I didn't like it. There. Is that better? Is that a little more depth with a little bit of purple in there? Okay, you know what? I'm gonna stop. Stop that. Put it away. Because we still don't have the present in here and we still don't have the shading on the red parts and uh, we haven't got a lot of time left, so I better get to it. So this time, I'm taking my small round brush, the synthetic detail brush, and I wanna add in the shadows into the red. So we've got all these dark areas, these dark red areas in here, so I'll do that. That is going to be a tiny bit of black mixed in with red. And is it dark enough? Let's take a look. Uh, no darker. How about now? Pretty close, yeah. Okay, so now I'm taking this dark color and coming in here to the shadows. So we'll kind of go right up along that hat there, give it a blend. So all I'm doing here is just taking a look at my reference photo and just following along with the shadow areas. I'm thinking of everything in the terms of lights or darks. That's it. Nothing in between. Light or dark. Okay, so once I've got that done, then I can wipe the paint off the brush, go and pick up some pure red, and here's where I can get it to blend. I can just go right along the edges with pure red and get those colors to blend a little bit. Only do this on the edges that you want blended. You don't want everything blended. Okay, how's it looking? Stop. Okay, I'm not going to go overboard. I'm going to move on to the next section. Picking up that dark red again. And I'll start over here. Yeah, I'll start over here. Okay, so I'll show you what I'm looking at. I've got some dark areas in there that are going to be shadows. I've got this dark area down at the bottom. Just filling in only the darkest parts. Again, just lights or darks. That's it. That's all we're thinking about. Is it light or is it dark? It 
it's one or the other, nothing in between. We get the in-between color when we blend at the end, so it, it does happen, but we just don't want to do it yet. Okay, so there's my light, there's my dark, and wiping that paint off the brush, picking up some red. Just blending along the edges. Wipe off the paint off your dirty brush and pick up new clean paint as necessary. So you don't overmix. We want to blend, not a not a mixture. <laughs> I'm sure that was clear as mud. A blend kind of goes from one color to the next, and a mixture would be more all stirred together. Okay, so I need a little more dark color. And I'll just keep right on going along those dark edges. Still got that present in there, but I'm not going to worry about it yet. dark color, get some shape. Okay, wipe off the paint. Well, thanks DJ, I like that background too. Um, I was hoping to carry over the more of it into the painting, and uh, maybe I will. I know I'm on a time limit because I have a meeting shortly, but... I don't like to let paintings go until I'm happy with them. <laughs> so I might be late. Okay, that is a beautiful blend. Now let's do that to the present. In front of the box. Leaving space this time for the ribbon. kind of following the pattern of lights and darks here. Um, if you can really follow closely the patterns, you can see how this box looks really super shiny. And if you follow the patterns of this really closely, where it's blended, blend it, where it's light, leave it light, where it's dark, darken it, you can have this really, really shiny effect on your box. A little more dark red. Get this area right down in here. Wipe that paint off, go back to some pure red. Blend it. Okay, let's see. Where else do we need some dark areas? A little right there. Let's see, maybe a little right there. Here. By the paw. Okay. Wiping it off, back to the red. I'm even going to take a little bit of yellow down here at the bottom of the box, just to brighten up that red. I don't want to brighten it with white because it'll turn pink, but I can use yellow to brighten the red. Okay. Well, that's starting to look a little better. Okay, I'm um, going to take a clean brush again, and I want to add my bright, bright, brights. So, a little white, a little yellow, because our highlights are always the lightest yellow we can get. And you got to use clean white for that. <laughs> Good luck at this point. All my white is contaminated. Okay. Top of the box. Got a nice shine. We've even got maybe a little bit of highlight color coming in here on some of the fur. 
from that glowing box. Okay. And I'll take a little more white. It's going to be a little dirtier white this time, but so be it. A little more yellow. I'm going to add that ribbon. Still want it to be bright colored. Okay, ribbon, ribbon. Wipe the brush off, pick up some more. Ribbon. Oop. Wipe the paint off, pick up some more. I'm painting on wet paint here, so gotta be a little careful about it. And ribbon. Can you see it? I can see it, okay. Okay, so now that that box is on there, and I am going to paint the big fluffy ribbon here, but this is still wet. I'm going to give it a second to dry. And actually, I'm just going to rinse out this brush. Keep using it. Now I want to darken the area right below. Got a little water on the brush. Okay, so right below that package, that gift, I want to darken it a little just to give it some depth here. So let's see. If I was if I still had good brown, I would use that. Mix it with my blue, but I don't, so I'm gonna use black and blue. Oops, right there. There's our shadow. Straight line. Straight line. And then mixy mixy mix. Scribble scribble. Have I mentioned yet that scribbling is my favorite painting technique? Well, it is. No more scribbles. Just want to get a dark color to get a little depth in here. And without a decent brown, purple is a good second choice. Do you want it darker though? Nope, warm blue. Well, so one of the nice things is you can, you know, keep going back and changing the color if you want to. And even if you don't want to, sometimes you have to. All right, what do we think of that? Still don't like that blue on the face. Okay. I'm going to do a couple of details on that gift and then see where else we need to make some adjustments. All right, so I'm going to take a white and a yellow, kind of a whitish yellow, sure you betcha. A little line, a little line. Okay, that's just the reflective part of my box. So I'll have a little bit, a little, little bit of reflection right there. Add some red. And again, a little reflection right here. So now you can see where the, the box ends and the teddy bear begins. The Santa bear. I want to get the top of that box really bright so you can see that it's glowing. I don't know why it's glowing, it just is. Maybe it's glowing because it's super shiny and there's light coming straight down and shining back up. Maybe. Who knows? Like I said, it was an AI image, so I'm sure those robots have their reasons. Okay. I'm gonna take a little more white. I'm just gonna take a light, light white color. How about a light blue color? Since that's what I'm getting. <laughs> light blue it is. Okay, and I'm gonna do a little bit of a light and a little reflection around the eye. Oh, that's better. That is much better already. Same with a little over here. Much better, so cute, okay. So for this part, we do want white. So I'm just have one little tiny speck of white left. Put that on the eye. 
big old chunk of white paint. It's got to be thick enough that it covers everything under it. There you go. Well, teddy bear's getting cuter. Let me see. Maybe a little more reflection right there. What about that ear? Is that bugging you too? All right. We'll go with an orange, kind of. Ew, no. Okay, fine. I'll get new white. Thank you, DJ. I, I hope he's looking good. I, it's kind of a fine balance between trying not to go overboard and also trying to be happy with it. So, you know, it's a balancing game. Let's see that ear. Okay. A little bit of yellow, a little bit of red. Oh, a little darker. More yellow, more red. You know how you get to the end of the painting and you do like one last brush stroke and go, ooh, I wish I hadn't done that. <laughs> I'm trying to avoid getting to that part. Okay, so here I am trying to mix up my own brown, which can be done. Not quite. Needs to be a lot darker. Like I was saying that purple is a good substitute for brown. Uh, if you want to go to brown from purple, you just add a little yellow. How's this? Too dark? Yep, too dark. All right, kind of blend those two colors together. I should get nice in between. Um, that color's kind of dark. Let's see. Well, now I'm getting some of those background colors into the painting. I'm getting that, some of that purple right into the ear. That white spot there I don't like. Okay. I think what that really needs is to be a little darker around the ear so the ear stands out. I'm going to try to do this carefully because <laughs> otherwise I'll be repainting the background. Okay, here we go. A little purple, a little blue. A little red, a little white. Heck, some orange because that was kind of an orangey purple. Oop, more white. Also, acrylic paint, it dry, does dry darker. So if you put your paint on the canvas and it looks like it's exactly the right color, it's probably not. But that's one of the reasons I do nice brushy, brush strokey backgrounds like this, very painterly, so that if you do have to go back and make adjustments, just make it more brush brusherly <laughs> and it'll blend right in. There you go, pro tips for days. Okay, I don't wanna go too overboard. Don't wanna repaint the whole background. I'm gonna have to stop. Okay, stop. Okay, how's the ear looking? Not so bad. Actually, I'm not unhappy with the entire bear right now, which is great because I'm late for my meeting. Take a highlight, couple of highlight dots. Okay, looks good. A few more dots. Let's see, anything else needs super highlights? Oh, we need that ribbon. Okay, let's do that ribbon quick. A little white, a little yellow. Okay, and I don't think 
goes dark enough behind it. So we'll just take a little bit of orange. What do you think? Does that look like a ribbon yet? Let's take some big white dots. Boop, boop, boop. How about now? Nope. How about some purple? Yeah, let's do purple. Darker purple. One way to get color to pop is to mix its opposite. So if you're um, working with yellow, the opposite of yellow is purple. So if you drop some purple in next to the yellow, it'll make that yellow really take off. Okay. And I think I have to stop there. All right, here we go. Here we are with the Santa Bear. Thank you for painting with me. Don't forget to check out the Creatively Uncorked membership, members.creativelyuncorked.com. And in there you get the video and step-by-step instructions. Uh, and you also get the traceable and you get the original painting. So check it out. And um, thanks for painting with me. I'll see you next week.